welcome to Expedition Networking, a special segment of the Networking RX podcast. I'm Frank Egan, founder and president of Amspirit Business Connections and your host for this program. For those of you who are familiar, on the Networking RX podcast, we share information and have conversations with experts, such as authors, researchers, and social scientists. And all of these programs are aimed at helping you learn how to become better at building professional relationships and understanding why they work. In this Expedition Networking segment, however, we're going to bring on successful entrepreneurs and unique professionals and explore their networking adventure and learn how they used relationships to create lasting success. Welcome to Expedition Networking. Today, I have a, I have a special guest. I have, to me, it's, it's special. Um, Drusilla Mogawera, I think I said that right. I tried to, uh, but anyhow, uh, before I, I, I start uh, talking with uh, Drusilla, um, I want to go back in time a little bit. I want to go back to April of 1994 in the country of Rwanda, which is in Africa. And I'm, I'm not going to get into the politics of any of this, uh, but the president's plane was shot down and that kicked off. Uh, approximately 100 days of what is best can be termed as genocide. Um, and there were people who survived and there were people who didn't. Um, and it, it eventually everything uh, got calmed down. Um, I don't know that you ever totally come back from that. But Drusilla is, she's one of the survivors. Um, and she's not just a survivor, um, but she's also... Um, She's a faith to faith speaker and a master storyteller. Um, and she is the executive director of a organization called uh, Bridge Refugee Refugee Services, which is a not for profit organization <clears throat> that assists refugees to integrate into new communities. Mainly, she's focused on uh, Eastern Tennessee. Um, but I have gotten to know Drusilla over the last year or so. And I just thought this would be an interesting story. Uh, networking is a powerful thing, and we often think of it for business. Um, and it is. It's great for business. Um, but it's also something that certainly helps us in life. So, Drusilla, thank you for your time. Welcome to the program. Thank you for having me, Frank. Um, can you, I guess, quickly, to the extent you're comfortable, you know, talk about your way out of Rwanda um, and just the people you relied on and where you got help and uh, those sorts of things. And then I really want to kind of shift gears and talk about, um, you know, the, how you're using networking with, uh, you know, integrating people into Eastern Tennessee and just helping people in this country have a better life. Um, I'm grateful that uh, you gave me this opportunity to talk with you and uh, I hope that the audience will benefit from our talk. Um, I'm originally from Rwanda in uh, 1994 when we had horrible genocide, I was there. My heart goes uh, to genocide survivors. We lost almost a million people and every family um, was impacted directly or indirectly, it was one of the darkest moments in my life. Uh, and my son uh, was just one year old. So uh, when uh, we had a message that um, uh, the airplane of the president was crushed and then we have to stay home, really we didn't know what to do, where to go. And then I remember it was, uh, uh, a rainy season and um, we, we were listening bombs ahead on the roof, on top of our roof. And um, it was hard to say, what do we do? And uh, we had to go um, with other community members to hide in the uh, stadium. And that alone, um, it was not vivable. And uh, uh, people gave, said that we can um, maybe escape where uh, there were uh, no war or it was more peaceful. And then um, 
they did put us in a truck and we we left and we got to um, a place where my sister and her husband was and we are staying in the home like maybe we were 40 people staying with there and then when the shooting again started um, we had to leave unfortunately my sister's husband was uh, killed on the way when we were fleeing and um, uh, my son was one year old as I said um, it was hard to keep him quiet so we can hide people will not find us where we were but also when we were working miles uh, on feet having him on my back and he was uh, a chubby baby and uh, sometimes I had to climb mountains and then people were rushed ahead of me and they will come back my nephews will come back to take him and uh, to help me to go out so I had to work miles and miles on feet and then sometimes we did spend nights outside without any covering any blanket with us and uh, uh, but during this journey also there were people who say hey if you are close to this family friends were saying if we are close to this family just go um, and maybe they can house you for uh, a day or two because we are just running um, ahead of time bombs and shooting and then uh, I remember one time also my husband was uh, uh, on the road broker and uh, he said, if you want me to kill me, you can kill me because I am tired. I do not want to die tired. And then we kept saying, let us run and survive. Um, and uh, my sister, even the, they killed the husband. She had a seven months year old baby and another small one with one year in a few months. And then we were just keeping running and people helping us with those babies. And um, we did happen to get to Congo, uh, the Democratic Republic of Congo. And um, it was hard, it was very hard. And um, uh, sometimes people were not nice to us and they were taking some belongings we had, um, but we were always prayerful. And uh, well, we ran with a few things we said, like when we were preparing to run, for example, we said, have, we didn't know if we run together. We said, if we can have one um, like um, sugar, uh, something to eat, which was home. So we did divide a few things we had, but uh, we'd, we'd just run without having like um, suitcase or things like that. So when um, uh, the government took power and the, they said that things were all getting stabilized, I went back home uh, after three months. And then uh, I regained and I was a civil servant before in the Ministry of uh, Environment and Tourism. I started to help uh, the government uh, to rebuild the country and to go for pacification and uh, educate people about unity and reconciliation. And then I was trusted to be in the different position as the member of parliament and the government. But um, it was I was not lucky because sometimes I, I challenged, you know, uh, because of my opinion, uh, I became um, targeted um, and my insecurity was getting higher and higher. And I, I had to flee in 2008 for my life. I was separated from my children for two years and I didn't talk to them for a year. And I didn't see my husband for a year, but fortunately he came and one year after I left and he applied for asylum. And then uh, America also facilitated the family reunification. So my children came um, two years after I left my country. So I did everything I could do for my country and I don't have regrets. Um, and I always pray for peace and stability and prosperity for my country, my native country. Um, and I'm grateful that I have um, a new country now that helps me, but on that, um, a journey where we had darkness and pain and uh, and we didn't know how to go out of this. I want to tell you that uh, friendship played a big role in that uh, because they were saying, this is how we can help. This is how you can get some resources. And I'm very grateful. Some of those ones are still alive and some passed away in between. And um, so, but on my journey or so, when I was freeing my country, 
and my hands was my my life was in the hands of two strange men and they could have done anything with me but um i trusted god and i said god i do not know where to go i don't have any direction but um protect me uh, and one of my superpowers really is faith i trusted god and uh, finally those two strange men connected me to the united nations high commissioner of refugees and then i did get a refugee status and through um connecting me to uh, us embassy and services this is how i went through interview and then came through the refugee process and i am here in the us uh, since 2009 how do i use networking um, to help refugees um, integrate in a new country especially in east tennessee i want to tell you some people ask me if there is one thing only one thing you can teach refugees um, so they can uh, integrate quickly what that thing is and i say networking building relationship and i'm it's not being eager but that is one of my strengths uh, because this is one of the things i missed when i came to us yes you can have shelter you can have food but i tell people that intellectually i was freezing with all my um, uh, expertise and i wanted people the professional to talk to and um, let alone uh, it took me maybe seven years really to feel like i was integrated i can find real people but in between i, I did also do um, uh, some trainings some people were saying yes if you this is an organization they can offer community leadership training because uh, even if i was higher trained our degrees are not transferable so you have to find a way um, uh, to 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 continue to grow i did more than 100 application of jobs but uh, my defining moment was really when my friend so currently i call her my sister because it was raining, shining, or snowing, when I call her or she calls me, we, we respond and we, we are best friend now. She introduced me to network marketing. And I didn't know how I can make it because I, I was just that time paid um, $6.55 an hour, but she showed me how I can get there. And then when I discovered uh, with my mentor, Rick Gutman, uh, uh, who was providing uh, educational financial literacy, I said, oh, this is just things people do not know because you discover that attitude and mindset is everything and you can even have multiple stream of income. So this is how I started. Now, as an executive director, one of the things I did for my organization is to build more relationship, to educate people, to tell the stories of mine and refugees so people can connect to uh, our challenges and then uh, uh, we count our stories as our power. And then I can tell you that from an agency that was about to close the door, we are getting now more than 200,000 a year in private donations to support refugees. So one of the things I do also is to find like resources, if there is leadership training, if there are those, those training in the community, I try to connect them to those resources. But also uh, I invite um, the community assistance team uh, to work alongside with refugees. Um, and they, there is a win-win in that situation. They learn from the new culture, but also the welcoming community learn from uh, the cultures and they share good food, music and talents. So it's a win-win situation, if I can say. So, um, uh, and when I was appointed as a director, I say, what are the three pillars of refugee integration? I said, learn English, and employment and community engagement. The more you engage with the community members, the more you learn, the more you bridge barriers and break barriers because the trust, distrust, and uh, uh, people sometimes when they don't know, they are afraid and the communication doesn't go fluently. So this is how we are trying to engage those relationships uh, with the new community members so they can build trust and then they can grow and thrive together. Now, when you say uh, integrate in the community, get engaged in the community, um, you're talking like the greater community within Eastern Tennessee or really anywhere, not just 
a community of refugees, but kind of expanding outside of those communities, correct? Yes, expanding outside of the community. And then other things maybe um, that brought me in the business um, because I know everybody is talented uniquely. And uh, I find out that I have to, based on what I have been researching and doing for the last 13 years, uh, this is why I become a coach to teach them how to network, how to build relationships and uh, how to engage. Now with the virtual world, you can even expand in these networks with uh, people in the States and other countries doing the same. And you can learn from the stories from other refugees across the world. So uh, we are trying to tell them to have an open minded attitude so they can learn not only from Eastern Tennessee, they can learn from something they have in Georgia. And sometimes also we want them to travel and see what is happening. Or if there's something happening well in Texas for farmers, for example, we want our clients to learn from those best practices. Interesting, very interesting. Um, is being the executive director, is that your full-time position? You're also a coach though, right? And a master yeah. storyteller? Yes. Sh uh, share about that, please. Yeah, so uh, as I told you, when I, I went to this network marketing and they showed me that, yes, some people just focus more on working for others and they, they forget. I lost everything I invested in for more than 40 years. I don't have any retirement plan now. So even if um, I, I have a living you know, a payment or wages, it's not enough for me to, to live a lifestyle I deserve. And through this network marketing and learning from other people like Robert Kiyosaki, I learned the rule of eight. So if you are a full-time employee, which even if I'm a director, sometimes I do 10 hours, 12 hours a day. Right. So let us do the regular rule of eight. You can eight, work eight hours for somebody. You can have eight hours of sleep. And then you can have eight hours for your family, for your business, for something for yourself. You have to find something for yourself. And this is how I said, yes, I don't have nobody to rely on besides of my skills and, uh, and my expertise. So this is how I said, what else I can do? And I started to learn how to tell my story professionally, how I become, because I have been speaking on stage and even in my country, I did many speeches. And I said, yes, I'm capable to do that. I decided now to be a public speaker, but coaching also skilled women and refugees and immigrants frustrated with low paying jobs so they can increase their income and live comfortably in any country in the world. So my coaching will be like international. It's not just something from uh, US residents, but women also, sometimes they have expertise, which is not really well valued. And I want to teach them how they can increase their income so they can have time for themselves, for the family, but not complaining all the time why they have a lot of potential ahead of them. And then for the skilled refugees and immigrants, uh, our degrees are not transferable in the countries where we are. Mm -hmm. But with the virtual world, now you can transfer your uh, knowledge and your expertise immediately, even the language you speak because you can teach uh, people worldwide who are speaking with you, you, your language. And they say that if you are one step ahead of somebody, you can teach them somebody. So I want to teach them how they can develop their own courses, how they can network and find other resources they don't have. So I want them like refugee, skilled refugees and immigrants not to struggle like I struggled. I want them to just jumpstart them, help them to find a way how they can transfer and monetize the expertise right away. Interesting. Mm. How can uh, listeners help you? So the listeners, uh, how they can help me really is uh, learning about refugees and uh, immigrants because sometimes you listen about anti-refugee rhetoric and anti-immigrant rhetoric and do we we are all aliens somehow. And I know that some of uh, our listeners uh, are believers and they, they are Christians, some of them. I just want to remember that welcoming the stranger 
is something of value we share. And I want to say as a businesswoman that stranger, they have our lives and our business in their hands. You know, uh, this is how we met with you. Uh, we were stranger to each other, yeah. but yeah. now we have something in common. So uh, I think um, uh, I, 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 our listeners also can, if they are women who are struggling financially, but who have skills and skilled refugees and immigrants, they can refer them to me. And uh, also I just want people to be compassionate to refugees and immigrants. These people want prosperity. They free their countries because one reason or another one. So they are not coming here to take resources and they are not takers, they are also givers. Um, and the studies show that uh, within five years, they give even more what um, they, they are getting. And this is a humanitarian problem, program when it comes to refugees. We see what is happening in Ukraine, in Afghanistan, in Africa, Asia, everywhere. So the refugee crisis is keep happening and happening. And I just want also the believers in God to, to pray. This, to pray, this is, uh, the wars and violence have to stop really, and we need great leaders who, who can lead people uh, and um, stop this pain and violence and uh, wars and uh, yeah. So uh, our listeners can just help us um, by being um, good connectors um, and to tell people that I'm here to help those skilled women, refugees and immigrants who want to go to the next level and uh, they can connect me through drosella.com. Uh, um, I'll put that in the show notes, your, your website. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Thank you very much for your time today. And thank you so much. And uh, I appreciate you and what you're doing. Thanks for joining us on the Networking Rx podcast. Please put what you've learned into action today and let us know if you have questions, comments, or ideas for future topics. You can email them to us at podcast at amspirit.com. That's A-M-S-P-I-R-I-T dot com. Finally, so you never miss an episode, be sure to subscribe to the Networking Rx podcast through iTunes, Overcast, or however you receive your podcasts. Now get out and network with someone. The Networking Rx podcast is the copyright production of Amspirit Business Connection. All rights reserved.